So in Next.js, we can create an API endpoint using something called route handlers. When we are creating a full stack application, we'll also need to write logic to interact with our database. For relational databases like Postgres, we can do this with SQL or some sort of ORM like Prisma, there is Drizzle, make things easier, right? But you also can write SQL direct. Now, there are a few cases where we have to write database. When creating our API endpoints, we need to write logic to interact with your database, of course. And the second one is if we are using React server component, fetching data on the server, we can skip the API layer and query our database directly without risking exposing our database secrets to the client. And that's one of the benefit of using server component because you can fetch data directly from your server component and it's going to run on servers. All right, so let's talk about using server components to fetch data. So by default, Next.js application, it uses React server component. So we are going to write database queries using that Vercel Postgres SDK that we installed. And the Vercel Postgres SDK provides protection against SQL injections. Now that comes default by default, okay? So here, what we want to do is we are going to go to the lib and then data.ts. So here we see that first we import SQL from Vercel Postgres. We can call this SQL function inside any server component, but to allow us to navigate the components more easily, kept all the data queries in the data.ts file. And we can import them into the components as we need it. Okay, so let's go to our dashboard page. We are going to now write some code. Just don't want to do just p dashboard. Let's go ahead and build out dashboard because we have data now that we can call upon. We are going to create an element called main. Here we want to create an h1. It's going to say dashboard, save it. We're going to have some class name. These are all going to be tailwind style. Now for this particular h1, what we want to do here is we are going to actually utilize our specific font that we also installed. So we're going to do Lusitana, which is the font that we installed. We're just going to say class name, and then we're going to say MB4 text. We're going to go with the text Excel, and then we're going to go to MD text dash two Excel. Okay, so after H1, let's go ahead and create a div. And inside this div, we're going to have some card that we are going to import from the UI. First, let's go ahead and add some class name here. So this is going to be the grid going to get a gap of six, we are going to small on small devices is going to have a grid calls dash two, it's going to be two column grid on larger devices, we are going to have a grid calls grid column of for save that. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and paste a bunch of code from here, then this is just going to be uh, for the card information. So as of right now, these are all commented out. And then underneath this div, I'm just going to have another div. And then let's go ahead and add some class name as well here. So we're going to say margin top at six, it's going to be a grid system, it's going to have grid columns of one, we're going to have gap of six, four, on larger devices, we're going to have a grid called of eight. And here as well, I'm going to some code here and we're going to come back to it later. Save it. Now, we also want to make sure this function right here that we are exporting is an async function. And we can do that because it's a server component. Now, there are also three components which receives data here. So you can see there is a card component that we commented out. There is a revenue chart right here and there's the latest invoices, okay? Let's fetch the data in the revenue chart. First, let's import the fetch revenue function from the data.tss. Fetch revenue from the data.js, so it's in the lib, data.ts, there you go, this is the function that it's returning, so we are importing this one into our page. And right here, before we return a JSX, we're going to say const revenue is equal to wait this fetch revenue call this function. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this revenue chart. Now it is giving me an error because I have not import this. So let's go ahead and auto import it from here. So import revenue chart from the UI. So in the UI, there is in the dashboard, you see that there's a revenue chart right here, all the codes are built out for you. So we don't spend more time. Go ahead. Refresh this page. Now, we do see the dashboard and recent revenue, but we don't really see any charts. So let's go ahead and take a look if everything's good. So let's go to our revenue chart 
function. What we want to do here is we are going to uncomment all the commented out section. There you go. Save it. Uncomment this one as well. Okay, let's see. Revenue chart.tsx is it should be running. Compiled, no errors here. Now we have the chart, revenue chart showing that is coming from our database. So if you take a look at the fetch revenue, you can see fetch revenue, it's getting its data awaiting a SQL statement, select star from revenue. And this SQL is actually coming from Vercel Postgres. Let's keep working. So for the latest invoices, which is this one. So we need to get the latest five invoices. Okay, stored by date. Now we could fetch all the invoices and sort through them using JavaScript, of course, but this isn't a problem as our data is small. But as our application grows, it can significantly increase the amount of data transferred on each request and the JavaScript required to sort through it. So to make your application really, really slow. So instead of sorting through the latest invoices in memory, we can use an SQL query to fetch only the last five invoices. Yeah, let's go to data.ts and latest invoices here. So we are going to select invoice amount, customer name, customer image URL, customer email, invoices ID from the invoices table. And we're going to join this by customers on invoices, customer ID equals to customer dot ID. And we're going to order this by invoices dot date and from a descending order. And then we are going to also limit this up to five. So you can do all this instead of using JavaScript to sort things out. We can directly write this into our SQL and it's going to grab only those information. So let's go back to our page. Let's go ahead and uncomment this. We are going to import this. And we are also going to get fetch latest invoices. We are going to create this latest invoices, await that fetch latest invoices, just like we did with the fetch revenue. We are doing this one. So latest invoices is this one right here. We got our component and we got our fetch uh, latest invoices. So let's go to before I check this, let's go here and then unmark the JSX here. Let's save it. There you go. Let's take a look. We have the revenue latest invoices. Now let's talk about this card components. Now these cards will display some data. Okay, so it's going to display total amount of invoices collected It's going to display total amount of invoices pending and is also going to display the total number of invoices and total number of customers at the end. Now, of course, temptation might be to fetch all the invoices and customers and use JavaScript to manipulate the data. With SQL, we can fetch only the data we need. It's a little longer than using array.length, but it means less data needs to be transferred during the request. Simply going to be invoice count promise. As you can see here, the SQL function, it select gets a count from invoices, then customer count promises, select count, it counts all of them from customers. So it star basically means everything. Um, let's now fetch the card data. So here that is what we are getting. So this is going to be destructured, we are going to get number of customers. Let, let's do number of invoices first number of customers, let's do total paid invoices, and then total pending invoices equals wait fetch card data call the function and let's just go ahead and comment this oh one at a time cool the first error is we have to import our card component that's going to be from our dashboard cards ui component save it there's no error right now we have our total paid invoices and everything so let's go ahead and now check out our application in the tab these these are all EY card that's already created. So now you can see we have collected 1,185 pending. These data are all coming from your database. So this is a full stack application. Total invoices 15, total customers 10. 